Hey guys, it's War. Welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be running down the top 50 features I really want to see in Pokemon Sword and Shield coming to the Nintendo Switch later this year. So now these games were actually announced decently long time ago, back in February now, so I feel like we are bound for more information soon, and with that new information, I have decided to come up with a list of 50 things I personally would like to see would come with these new games. Now, I think these games have a chance to be the best in the series overall, because it's the first time making the leap over uh, from completely portable system to the Switch, which is more of a hybrid, obviously, and I feel like uh, we have a potential to do really good. Of course, it's going to be some kind of transitional kind of gripes and changes that might not flow as well from one system to another, but I have faith that Game Freak can pull this off and make this game really good, and I decided to make a list, of, of course, a list of things I think that they should do to help make this game as good as it can be. So, this list is kind of an order of relevance to one topic to the other, not really in order of importance to me, so let's just go ahead and get started with the first thing I have on here, which is a vastly improved online battle system. So, of course, Online battling has always been a feature in Pokemon games for a while now, uh, but recently it kind of feels like, not even recently, but all the time, it feels like they haven't really been able to get it completely right. So I really want to see them improve the online battle system uh, and really make it more of a kind of compelling feature in the games. I want the post game to be a lot focused on actually going on to online. We can have kind of hub areas like we did with Festival Plaza, just kind of streamline them and make them easier and more incentive things to get people going to try the onlines, uh, you know, like rewarding items and like tournaments and like special events and stuff make it a pretty in-depth online game within itself like make the online part of the pokemon game almost worth the purchase alone outside of the story completely and i know that's probably not what they're going to be going for with the online system but regardless i would like to see a lot of improvement to online battles and kind of make the whole way they do it uh just more streamlined more straightforward and a specific idea i have for this is kind of like ranked different leagues and like matchmaking kind of stuff uh where like let's say maybe you're like in the silver league so then you get placed against other silver leagues and there's like a silver league leaderboard for that month within the people within your league or something like that. I don't know. A lot of ideas they could do to make the online battle system a lot cooler. So, moving on from online battles, something similar here is the ability to change online battle backgrounds. So, for the past couple games, actually every single game that has to do with online has had the background battles always consistently be this one generic kind of uh, you know, neon kind of area. So I think it'd be really cool if we had the option to actually change this background to be whatever kind of scenario we'd like it to be. Now, this doesn't really have to come with weather effects, so if we change it to, like, uh, you know, a rainforest or something, it doesn't have to be raining, but maybe that can be a feature as well. I'm up for whatever. Uh, I'd just be like the idea to maybe even unlock new ones as you go on, so we get, like, 50 in total, and we start off with, like, 25, and you work through re rewards for winning battles is actually unlocking these new backgrounds, maybe new songs. All kinds of cool stuff they can work out with that. Alright, number three is going to be a weird one, um, and I would like to see actually other uh, real-life online players viewable in the overworld, so uh, this would be an interesting one. I think that'd be cool if we could see actually other players just generically in, well, let's say, maybe just a Pokemon Center. You can see them interact with them and say, like, hey, let's let's trade or something. They just show up as NPCs. You say, hey, I want to trade with you, and then the next time that person is on their Switch, they might get a message and say, hey, someone wants to trade with you. Some kind of really simple system like that I think could go a long way in actually making online communications a lot easier uh, with different people. I don't really know how they could work this system out, but just an idea I'm throwing out there that seems like it has a lot of potential to be pretty interesting. And of course, if we are revamping a lot of the online battle system, I think we should focus on making EV and IV training a little bit maybe not easier but different um i've been playing pokemon for a long time and i still have not really gotten down how to do ev and ip training effectively and really what all those kind of mean and how to figure all those things out it's really way more complicated than i think it needs to be and if people are going to actually get more into online battling i feel like more people will be kind of focusing on these things so i feel like these things need to be kind of streamlined to either be easily accessible and also easily more to change and kind of figure out when you're catching a pokemon and stuff like that i think nature is really right now are like perfectly fine how they are uh but maybe even trained like change the whole breeding system i don't know maybe i'm getting outlandish but i think the way they handle it right now is a little bit weird i feel like it's due for some kind of revamp in that regard 
Now, number five is uh, bringing things down a little bit. I want to see more local stuff actually go on here. Uh, you know, like, let's go ahead the dual, like, the dual player option, which is kind of a cool gimmick, I'll, I'll be honest, but Rizzing really wasn't that enti enticing. But I would like to see potentially a kind of split screen battles with a single system, uh, potentially. That could be really cool, in my opinion, where, you know, like, maybe you sit down with your friend and you just pick up Pokemon from your box, or maybe you can put in his account, and you guys can play off one Switch, or yeah just one switch next to each other and have a pokemon battle i know pokemon battle revolution had a system similar to this i think because i remember doing this with my friends as a kid uh in that game and i think this would be a really cool thing to bring back for this game don't really know the logistics of working this out maybe you pick pokemon from your box to battle against each other maybe you pick just generic pokemon they give you i don't know but it would be interesting kind of fun i know you have the issue of seeing each other's moves but I'm sure there's a way you can figure this out. All right, and also talking about uh, Pokemon Let's Go, I know that in that game you could pretty much only use the single Joy-Con. That was kind of interesting and a unique way of doing it, but I would like to see them use both Joy-Cons in this one for sure. Like I was saying in the split screen battles, of course, maybe make that usable with just one Joy-Con. Maybe we can even have the option of using one Joy-Con. Maybe, but I would like to take access of the full unique controller because this is the first mainstream games of being on a actually home console of sorts, uh, you know, with the Switch. So I think actually being able to use the Pro Controller or both Joy-Cons when in portable mode, or not even just portable mode, just both Joy-Cons uh, in general, just use like both things, like maybe ones for camera. We'll get to the camera usage stuff later, but uh, you know, just when just holding, playing the game, I think it's a lot more comfortable to use both controllers as like a normal kind of controller system like most games do. And I feel like that should make that switch over from the, what they had in Let's Go to actually using a normal uh, pr Switch controller, because I really don't think we need the motion uh, kind of catching or anything like that in this game, so we really don't need the motion controls, so I think it's fine to go back into the typical kind of uh, standard controller usage. And of course, more from Pokemon Let's Go, something I do want to see carried over is the ability to change nicknames anywhere. Now, I really like this feature in Let's Go where you can just change the Pokemon's nickname without having to go talk to a certain person in the uh, kind of overworld and find their house, they remember their house and fly back to him to change the Pokemon's nickname. I think this was really cool to be able to just go on the menu and just change the nickname. I don't know why they would change this back, but, you know, they are changing some stuff back from Let's Go back to the normal, so hopefully this isn't one of those things that gets cut. Um, also added in here, it'd be cool to be able to have, still have the option to nickname, nickname a Pokemon as soon as you catch it, because they did take that away in Let's Go for some reason, and uh, I didn't really like that. I, I still want to have the ability to nickname my Pokemon as soon as I catch it, so just putting both those things together would be perfect. And also, number eight is like maybe controversial one, so people might not agree with me here. I would like the ability to trade or change the nickname of a traded Pokemon. Now, I get why they do this. Um, you know, when you trade a Pokemon, it is someone else's Pokemon you're receiving and using. So, uh, I kind of see that why they wouldn't allow you to change the nickname. But still, at the same time, it is sometimes kind of annoying uh, in this regard. And also, I do think you should be able to at least change the nicknames of Pokemon you trade in-game. So in-game trades and stuff like that, I feel like you should be able to change the nickname of, because those aren't real people. They're, they're you know, NPCs and stuff like that. So in-game trades, I feel like you should at least be able to change the nicknames of, and that is a feature I'd like to see changed in the in Pokemon Sword and Shield. And uh, we're still on the Let's Go kind of stuff here. Changing clothes anywhere was a really cool thing that they had in Let's Go, and even not that, uh, back in Gen 6 in the Kalos region, we were able to change our Pokemon, or our clothes specifically, within uh, every single Pokemon Center, and I think they took that out in Sun and Moon, and Ultra Sun and Moon for some reason. You have to go to certain shops and everything to change your clothes, which I think is very dumb and really annoying, because uh, you have to know what towns have shops and, uh, you know, this and that. So I think the ability to change your clothes anywhere, as in the way it is in Pokemon Let's Go, would be super cool, and uh, I think that should definitely come back. And at the very least, like I said, maybe even just the Pokemon Center would be nice enough. Now, um, visual differences for the same Pokemon, I think, is a feature that could be pretty interesting to deal with. Um, kind of like how we had in Let's Go, where it's sometimes the Pokemon have an energy around them blue or red indicating that they're either bigger or smaller than typical Pokemon that was interesting enough you know add some kind of distinction to your Pokemon I feel like in general if you send out a Charmander and someone else sends out a Charmander I think that it'd be really cool if these two Charmanders had a visual height difference between the each other it doesn't have to be dramatic doesn't have to be uh stat based at all like one can be stronger if it's weaker that doesn't really have anything to do with it just a visual kind of difference to make your pokemon seem more unique and maybe even go as far as like some charmanders have spikes on their back some don't some pokemon have longer claws than others i know this is getting kind of crazy and might be a lot of extra unnecessary work for the developers to do 
but it would be a pretty cool idea uh, to throw out there and have Pokemon have actual physical like differences on them to really se separate them apart. You know, has like Spinda has like a million different designs. Why not have a million different designs on a Pokemon like Bulbasaur that has different spots on their body and just kind of transfer it like that? That could be cool too. Things like that and just div div divvying up the differences between uh, specific kind of Pokemon to you and other people would be interesting. Now, this one's basic, this one's quick and easy, the return of following Pokemon. Now, in the trailer, of course, we did not see Pokemon following you, but maybe they just had the option turned off for later reveal, fingers crossed, I doubt it, but we can still sit here and pray for number 11, which is, of course, the return of following Pokemon. Everyone likes this feature, everyone wants it back, it's pretty much uh, said, it, said and done with that one. So, next up, I would like to see more outfits for your Pokemon. Now, this actually goes along with the visual differences I mentioned earlier, and we did have outfits that were, like, in uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, just for your partner Pokemon, so maybe we could have different outfits just for our starters, you know, Grookey and Sobble and Scorebunny, but it would be cool to actually have this for, like, majority of Pokemon in general, uh, so maybe that's an idea we can throw out there, but of course, like I said, with the other kind of visual differences thing, this could be really hard to implement, and I kind of understand completely why it wouldn't be there. Now, I also want to see a plethora of more clothing options, whether it be for your Pokemon, like I just mentioned, or just for your character yourself. Um, every game has added more and more kind of options for clothing, uh, and like in Sun and Moon, they, op they added the option to change the dyes of different clothes, which is a really cool idea. I just want to see this expanded upon a lot. You know, give us like thousands of different clothing. Um, I really enjoyed the game, it's super random. Um, called Everybody's Golf slash Hot Shots, Hot Shots Golf, which has a bajillion amount of avatar clothing options. Take something like that. Let's just do something like that. You know, it's a lot of fun to decorate your own character and add their own personality. And one of my friends actually had the idea of including clothing for past game characters. So, for example, you could get po um, past game characters like Brendan's kind of outfit uh, from the Hoenn region. You can get, uh, you know, like Plumeria's outfit from Pokemon Sun and Moon. That could be cool as well. Just uh, maybe even mix match those kind of outfits all together uh, would be a super cool idea and just get iconic kind of clothing. And maybe even clothing from NPCs. So you could wear what a hiker wears and stuff like that. And that would be super cool, unique ideas to incorporate you know, Pokemon's history along with the uh, the typical clothing you usually get. So along with the more clothing options in general throughout the game, I also want to see a more diverse character customization, customization at the start. Now this refers specifically to your avatar. So like in the beginning of most games, you can pick from a couple, I usually like six or maybe eight different kind of character options. I feel like you should be able to choose separately what your skin color is, what your hair color is, maybe even a basic kind of hair design, and your eye color, at the very least, those four things. It's not that complicated to just do those things in four different steps. It won't turn anyone away from the game saying this is too complicated or anything, so I don't know why they haven't incorporated this yet. Hopefully we can get this to make our characters at the beginning of the game look a little bit more like us, because uh, a lot of times, you know, like skin color and hair color don't really match up one for one, so they end up looking kind of weird and not really like your actual, how you actually look in the games until you actually get to the first kind of barbershop or whatever at least in gen 6 and gen 7 where we did have these character customization options present so hopefully we actually have more options at the beginning of the game to have the first person portion of the game uh play as a character that looks more like you uh now completely jumping base here uh multiple save files you know straight up i would like to see multiple save files you know if someone wants to do like a nuzlocke run then they can do that and not have to worry about buying another copy of the game of course i see why they don't do this for i just said they would have to buy another copy of the game and that's 60 more dollars in game freak's pocket that they wouldn't get otherwise but you know it would be a really nice and kind feature to do multiple save files uh just you know present to us maybe even it's just like three three save files or whatever maybe you don't have to be able, not able to trade with your, yourself or something like that i don't know it would just be nice it would be fun you know to play through the game with different kind of team options or different challenges or whatever on uh, speaking of different challenges difficulty options would also go hand in hand with these multiple save files really really well uh, of course we did have the harder difficulty i think it was black and white 2 that had these games could be wrong it was either the original black or white and black and white 2 i don't really remember but one of them did have a harder difficulty that i think was unlocked after you beat the main game 
Um, so I think it would be cool to see the, that kind of difficulty option return. Uh, maybe even at the start of the game, you have like e beginner mode and like expert mode that makes um, you know maybe this uh, the beginning tutorials a little bit easier, not easier, but like more streamlined. And then also in hard mode, um, they're, while they're more streamlined, it's also you know the beginning Pokemon and just Pokemon in general levels are like two to three levels higher than the you know standard beginner mode and stuff like that. So people that have been playing Pokemon for a while can play this expert mode, and people that are getting into the series for the first time can play beginner mode and still have a good time with it. That would be really cool. And then of course, like I said earlier maybe even a nuzlocke mode incorporated into it i know they probably don't want to make pokemon that you that you faint gone forever but maybe just maybe they might incorporate a way for pokemon that faint you don't get them back until like maybe after you beat the elite four the main story is gone these pokemon reappear in your pc as pokemon that like were gone originally or something like that just a way to incorporate a nuzlocke mode i don't know if people get mad that pokemon's copying a fan idea i don't know why they would but i think that'd be a great idea to incorporate an actual nuzlocke mode within the games now, this one seems pretty obvious, and I'm pretty sure it'll happen, but uh, have 3DS Pokemon and Let's Go Pokemon transferable to the new Sword and Shield region. I don't know if this is confirmed or not, but it really should be possible. I, I don't really have anything else, much else to say on this, just really want to see this happen, and if it doesn't happen, I'll be pretty upset. I mean, a uh, pretty straightforward one that I definitely want to see come. Randomly, I want to see the classic bike item return. We have not seen the bike since Gen 6 and from Let's Go and, you know, all of Alola. We did not have the bike anywhere in sight and even in Gen 6, they kind of pushed the roller skates more so than the bike. I really like the bike and of course if we're going back to Europe, bikes are everywhere in Europe. Let's go to the, let's go to England, let's ride on a bike, that just makes so much sense. So to see the classic key item bike returning would be amazing and uh, just something I really want. Of course with that uh, number 19, uh, I do want to still have ride Pokemon and I also want to see uh, your own Pokemon be able to be those ride Pokemon. Like we had in Let's Go, you know, if you had a Gyarados on your team, you could surf on the Gyarados and it was visible in the overworld. I like to see this come back as well. Uh, so maybe if you go onto like the go to the water you if you don't have you know like a Gyarados on your team it calls in like let's say a typical Lapras or whatever and you ride on the Lapras instead but if you have a water type Pokemon like let's say like, maybe even Swampert or something like that don't know where I got Swampert from but sure you could ride on the Swampert instead that'd be a really cool um, idea we could throw it out there and uh, it would be really cool and also really kind of 19.5 make sure ride Pokemon don't actually change your outfit or theme that was really annoying. I really didn't like it when it changed the roots theme and everything and your own outfit that you worked so hard for this outfit for. But if you're using a ride Pokemon and you get in a trainer battle, you don't get to see your own custom outfit, uh, which that was kind of dumb. So, uh, yeah, also talking about more stuff from, uh, you know, that was actually not in, uh, of course, not in Let's Go, but something that was in the Alolan, uh, you know, Generation 7 games, was a mini-map. Now, I really want to see the mini-map return, and not only return, but come with a lot of improvements. Now, the mini-map in Gen 7 is kind of frustratingly not very good, so maybe a way that if you hit the minus, you know, I don't know what that button's actually called, maybe the minus button, I don't know. Whatever it is on the Switch, you hit that, it expands the mini-map, you can actually, like, move around, uh, use, like, in any kind of typical kind of RPG game, or open-world game, where you can actually look around the mini-map to your own desires, zoom in and out or whatever um so i just definitely want to see the minimap come back it was a really helpful tool and actually make it streamlined and a little bit better than it was in those games now uh like typical kind of games nowadays along with the minimap i'd like to see a quest log show up now this would be really cool uh and i definitely want to see this happen really really bad i don't know if it will or not but a quest log that keeps track of like little things that npcs tell you that could really expand some side quest would be super super cool so even if someone's like hey can you catch in uh, a loathing grimer for me like for example that i think that even happens in ultra sun and moon a lot of times i'm like okay sounds good i don't catch a loathing grimer till like a couple days later completely forgot about that guy i don't know where he is i'm not gonna go hunting him down so i'm not really gonna do that but if that was manly manually kept in the games as like this character on this route wants to see an loathing grimer once i get it i can go to him and there you go and of course with that the potential for more lengthy side quests uh, which is my actually next point is a plethora of side quests that actually have long lasting kind of things throughout the game uh, you know like maybe side quests you do a certain thing for them they get updated so like let's say there's like hey I want you to defeat my brother you go to the brother you beat him and he goes huh I want to train better can you catch me this Pokemon you go catch this Pokemon for him uh, you go to catch that Pokemon his brother is there it just keeps evolving 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 and these side quests become more and more expansive I know side quests haven't typically been a huge part of Pokemon games but it would be a cool place to start here with the Switch having more kind of things to do. 
bigger, longer, cooler side quests would definitely come along with that. And of course, with the quest log, that would pair up pretty nicely. So, uh, next up, more kind of typical JRPG stuff. Free camera control. That would be cool. W would love that. Now, of course, as we saw in the trailer, it doesn't look like we're going to get a free uh, controlling camera like we do uh, in most games. Like, like, you know, with the right thumbstick, be able to move the camera around. It doesn't look like we're going to be getting that in, in Pokemon Sword and Shield, but maybe they weren't kind of showing it in the trailer for some reason. Maybe um, that one scene where you kind of pan around that get your own avatar's head, maybe that actually is a glimpse of the free control camera. I don't know, but I'd love to see it, even if it's kind of limited and you'll be able to look around kind of stuff. I don't know, it just feels a lot more in control of the world when you actually do have the camera uh, to your own disposal, and I really want to see that actually happen in a Pokemon game. So, another cool thing to make this a little bit more open world, um, I don't really want an open world game per se, but I definitely want to see maybe at some point a choosable direction path. You know, for example, maybe at one point when you beat the second gym, you can either go to gym 3, 4, or 5, and the levels scale accordingly to what path you're ready for. Maybe you can go through the cave, forest, or uh, mountain instead of one or the other, and then you can come back and loop around this way. You can kind of choose your own path in certain ways and make the, all your adventure a little bit more your own, uh, opposed to everyone else's kind of adventure that everyone does when playing through this game. Would be really cool. Of course, not really open world, open world, but a little bit more of a choosable direction path for more freedom would be interesting. And uh, speaking of the reg region itself, this is pretty like baseless claim, but I would love to see the region of Galar. I think it's Galar, uh, whatever Gen 8 actually is, they announced it, I, I, I remember, but I think it's Galar, be the largest and most diverse region we've ever had. Now, when looking at the actual released map of the region, it looks really promising, it looks really big, and like, pretty zoomed out in a lot of different areas, and like I said, diverse areas, but we are on the Switch, so I'd like to see no excuses of making this the biggest region we've ever had, with the most things to explore, and with this being the biggest region, I don't really think we have to have another a, a need for two regions, like, you know, we don't have to return to Kalos or anything like that, but uh, we'll get to there, we'll, we'll talk about Kalos and returning to Kalos in a moment, but like I said, if this is a really large and diverse and, like, expansive and explorable region, we don't really need another region or anything like a post-game entirely region if the game is just long in general and a lot of things to come back to throughout the kind of entire region that I'm satisfied with that. So, um, speaking of Kalos, I'd like to see this be a kind of slight sequel to Kalos or, you know, just in the general the other games. Mention, the reason everyone keeps mentioning Kalos in regards to the Galar region is that Kalos is supposed to be based on France, Galar region is supposed to be based on, like, Great Britain and England, so they're kind of right there, they're kind of right next to each other, it's Europe, they're, they're connected by, like, a, I think it's called the Tube? Maybe? I don't know, I'm not European, so I don't know, but that underwater tunnel or something like that, um, you know, very, very close regionally, uh, regions in the real world, or countries in the real world, they're very close to each other, so to have them, you know, would go, like, the story from Kalos kind of evolve into the story of Galar with a lot of mentioning of the events of Kalos and, you know, actually referencing a lot of characters and stuff like that. Uh, would be really cool to see. And of course with Kalos moving on to 27, I would like to see a visible Kalos. You know, I don't really have to see the entirety of that region remade and be huge. Of course, that would be cool and I wouldn't definitely wouldn't complain in any sort of way. But, um, you know, the ability to visit like maybe a certain town of Kalos or certain areas would be pretty interesting and really cool to kind of see the evolution of the 3DS to the Switch just in a kind of one-for-one -one comparison would be really fun. And if not Kalos, I'd of course like to see any other region, you know, visitable any region, uh, Sinnoh, Hoenn, whatever. I'd actually prefer they didn't visit Sinnoh because I want to see Sinnoh in its own game. Sinnoh remakes 2020, please, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, but of course, uh, with all this mention of, you know, references from the past and visiting other regions, returning characters would be super cool, and not only with returning characters, I'm sure there will be a few characters that return from past games, because there almost always are. I'd like to see characters that aren't just cam cameos, like actually continue their plot lines and make them actual characters and not just cameos. Like, we had Grimsley in uh, Sword and Sh or Sun and Moon, he was just a cameo, like it would have been cool if Grimsley was actually there to help you take down the evil team or something like that. I don't know, for example, if we have Lily come from Sun and Moon, I don't want her to just be like, oh hi, I'm Lily, I'm from Alola, I like this region, let's battle. There you go, she walks off. 
that would be pointless. I mean, it would be cool, but it would be pointless. I want to see her be like, I'm here to study at this region. Can you, um, you know, like, let, let's help team defeat this evil team or whatever. And she works with him. She comes back later in the game. And she's kind of like a side character in this own game. And the whole time, if you've actually played Alola and, and Sun and Moon games, you're like, hey, this, this is actually a character from the past. This is really interesting how they're continuing her story and actually evolving her as a character instead of her just being a quick, like, one battle cameo or something like that. So that would be an interesting way to do it. All right, number 29, moving on from just seeing a lot of returning characters, I would like to see multiple uh, new characters, and with those new characters, I'd like to see multiple rivals in this game. Now, we have had literally a multiple rival scenario forced upon us on Gen 6, which was horrible. Those kind of friend people, no one really liked those, they all kind of were weird, the only real rival in that game was Serena. Um, and the other ones were kind of just there. So I'd like to see multiple rivals integrate a little bit better. And of course, I really liked Ch um, Chian or <laughs> I'm mixing their names. Uh, what was that? Charon and then Bianca were actually uh, really cool rivals in uh, Gen 5. And I'd like to see make something like that maybe return. That would be an interesting thing to deal with uh, like that. Or maybe even similarly, we had sort of uh, multiple rivals in, you know, Gen 6. We had Gladion, of course, uh, and then Hal, or other way around. We had Hal, of course, was our main rival, and then Gladion was also kind of a pseudo-rival there as well. So, um, something like that could be interesting. I definitely want to see multiple rivals take the dynamic, take the forefront, instead of just one rival. I don't really... Also... A lot of people are asking for like an evil rival again. We don't really need that necessarily, but if we do have a, a mean rival, um, that would be cool. I honestly would prefer that, but you know, it's not a must for me personally. Um, but something that is evil, an intriguing evil team. Um, also this time, I'm hoping what I mean by intriguing is more so specific to not as world-endingly global. You know, a lot of things have been recently just been super catastrophic and massive. Like, every single Pokemon game has been dealing with world-ending events, except for maybe, like, the uh, Gen 1 and 2, and more so focused on Team Rocket. I'd like to see a return to that kind of style, where it's not like, if we don't catch this legendary Pokemon, the the world's gonna be destroyed. I'd rather see, you know, like, and then this, the purposes are gonna become corrupt or evil, um, and maybe not destroy the world with it, but become, like, you know, a billionaire or something like Team Rocket. Just a more personal kind of uh, evil team, evil quest, or just kind of quest along the whole way instead of kind of catastrophic that probably won't be the case but you know a man can dream and I, I actually prefer those more the stories a little bit more um, it doesn't seem as crazy as you know some kind of world ending thing which is kind of like okay I doubt would be in this scenario but something more personal and direct would be more interesting to me personally and talking about you know this plot related stuff skippable cutscenes would be awesome now um, just in general, like, I, of course, some people are like, okay, you should have skippable cutscenes on your second playthrough or something like that. Just every time. Why not just have every time hit start? Are you sure you want to skip this cutscene? Yes, because who knows if this is, like, your second system playing the game. Who knows if, like, this person just doesn't care about the plot. If they go and then complain the plot's not good and they didn't watch the cutscenes, that's on them. You know, I just think in general we should have the option to skip these cutscenes. And with these cutscenes... I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna be the first person to say it. I want voice acting in Pokemon. I, I'm not gonna lie. I really want to see some voice acting in these games. I know some people are like, voice acting would ruin the charm. I think, of course, we don't need voice acting for our own character. Uh, similarly to Breath of the Wild and Zelda, I think that was one of the first games in the series to have voice acting. It worked, like, flawlessly. It just worked really well. Of course, not everything needs to be voice acted, like, every single piece of dialogue in the entire game, but I'm singing really kind of important cutscenes. And then also, with this voice acting, we could have actually animated reprisals for certain roles. Uh, for example, as mentioned earlier, let's say we have Lily come back. Why not have her voice from the anime when she talks in a, potentially talks in a cutscene, have her voice from the anime voice the character in the game. That would just be perfect and a really, really cool way to incorporate the anime with the actual games themselves. That's something I'd personally like to see really, really badly is voice acting, and of course, uh, have like subtitles below the voice acting. Just it would make a lot of those moments that are supposed to be really impactful and important emphasize a little bit more if you actually had voice acting to go alongside with. Are right, you talking more about the plot stuff? I'm kind of done with the Ultra Boost stuff personally. I'm kind of good. Let's just move on past that. I mean, if we return to it, it won't be the end of the world. I'm sure we can craft an interesting story out of it. But personally, I'm kind of done with the Ultra Beast stuff. Let's get some kind of new, interesting dynamic going on here. Uh, and also with the, uh, the game, I want to focus on the post-game, where the post-game actually has side plots becoming the main focus of every, like, become the center focus of the game. After you meet the post-game, after you beat the main uh, league, the main evil team, you go into the post-game, and some of those earlier side plots we were saying that could be expense expansive actually expand all the way into being the main focus of the game. That could be really interesting and make those kind of side plots take shape. Maybe there's a 
character like, um, ooh, shoot, what is his name? The, the guy that hunts Suicune? Yusamine, maybe? No, Eugene, I think it's Eugene? I don't remember, I'm sorry. But something like that, where a legendary hunter, then you go and like, you should have to catch the legendary before they get this guy or something like that. Um, so something like that could be really interesting and we just want to see some side plots become more focused. Maybe there's like three different plots, actually, plot lines going on in post game that are actually kind of important. And of course they deal with more powerful trainers as per them being in the post game. So. Along with the post game, I'd like to see Battle Frontier return straight up. Let, let's let's bring back a Battle Frontier, something of the sorts. Um, you know, we did have, uh, you know, the the battle tree in uh, the Lowland games. Didn't love it, honestly. It was pretty much just straight battling. I'd like to see some kind of stuff where you can take some borrowed Pokemon in some areas. You know, Pokemon challenges. Um, different kind of rule sets for different things, um, like I was saying, double battles, triple battles, kind of different areas, different buildings, and then of course their own like Battle Frontier champions, whatever they're called, uh, that you have to work your way up to a battle, stuff like that would be really cool, um, and I really want to see a Battle Frontier style kind of area return, especially for the post game of these, uh, of the games themselves. And also, another returning thing that actually just comes straight from Alola, I really liked the League Challenge. I, I really liked that. I do kind of wish that you got a call or something on your phone instead, and it just said, hey, you have a new challenger at the League, you go, and then you battle that person uh, that's challenging, you know, your champion chair. Something like that, but overall, I just really like to see the different kind of final champion battles um, be a little bit different. I do want to see it, like, you know, this time when you go to the battle, the, to the Pokemon League for the first time, there actually is a champion. They've been the champion for a while. The Pokemon League is established, you have to defeat them, and they've been through the story, typical kind of champion stuff but let's say after you beat them they are no longer the champion in the story and in the world you actually have these battle challenges like the league challenges uh actually that come back into play so uh moving on to number 37 more challenges and rematches let's just have some in general player rematches like we did in uh, heart gold and soul silver and omega ruby alpha sapphire now i'm not really necessarily talking about like you know rematch gyms or elite four members i just mean just like you know trainers in general they just give you a call on your you know uh, ipad or whatever the heck you're gonna give you in this game who knows um but you know they just give you a call and they say hey i've been practicing you want to come by route seven and uh and give me another challenge you fly by their pokemon are 30 levels stronger so they have some new guys some of them evolved and it's just kind of fun to battle this guy again in some random place and you go man you've gotten stronger and they get some extra cash i know that was a feature in heart gold and soul silver and omega ruby off of sapphire i don't know why it's typically in the remakes but uh i would like for that to be a feature in you know the um this game for the first time around that'd be really cool and also like i was saying may as well just have it with like actual other trainers you know like i was saying earlier cameos um or specifically with important people now i know i was saying earlier i like to see people come back as not necessarily just cameos like if we had cynthia i'd like to be in the story instead of just you know let's battle but even if we do get her as like a battle why not that'd be cool so definitely interesting to go with there uh number 38 i want to see some mini games yeah, I, I, I want to see some mini games come back, and I want to see some mini games specifically where you can use your own Pokemon. You know, think like Contest or the Pokeathon, Mark Gordon Soul Silver, which is my personal favorite set of mini games. Um, and also, like the Contest, like I was saying in, uh, you know, the Hoenn region was actually interesting, more interesting to me than other mini games because it was your own Pokemon that you trained and used, being used in these kind of mini games that they were kind of fun and interesting, a little bit different, something different to do. And also, I want to say that hard to get items uh, should be a able to be attained through this way but I don't want them to be exclusive because I think it is really frustrating people that don't enjoy doing these minigames being forced to do these minigames just to get a good item for like competitive battling or something like that that bothers me personally but um, I do want to see some like hard to get items maybe available through this way even if there is another option so that's something kind of minor I want to point out um, also 39 minigame ish roto capture I want to see it come back now we don't necessarily need roto tell maybe they just give you a camera I just want to see it come back, potentially expanded upon a lot. I really enjoyed the kind of, uh, the, the you know, Pokemon Snap-esque kind of situation they put you in where you have to take pictures and stuff while Pokemon. thought it was really cool. thought it was a really interesting way of bringing back Pokemon and Snap in a way. They can expand on it, make it cool, make you use your Switch, gyroscope, whatever. I liked it. You know, I, I had a good time with it. I wanted to come back for sure. All right, number 40, we're moving on to rain and weather system. This could be cool, and I honestly, it could be just be visual. I just want there to be random scenarios where there is rain effects, um, you know, like just random times. There's like a 5% chance on most routes where it just could be raining for whatever reason. Why not? You know, just just a day it rains. Um, then, you know, sometimes it's, uh, 
you know, really windy that day. Sometimes it's snowing in certain areas. Whatever, just various amounts of weather uh, kind of effects could be really cool. And of course, with that, seasons would be awesome to become back. You know, I really like seasons. A lot of people like seasons that were in the Unova region on uh, the black and white games. Seasons were a factor. They could come back. I'm not personally dying for them to return, but it would definitely not be a complaint of mine if there were, you know, four different kind of looks for an area, depending on what month you're playing the game on. That's a really cool and just a really cool feature that I'd like to see return for sure. But, you know, like I said, it's not a must have. And also, we're just going through kind of random stuff here, because why not? We're getting to the end of the list, number 42. Fun shiny hunting, you know? Uh, shiny hunting has typically been hit or miss in most games. Some people like it, some people don't, the methods of doing it. I personally really liked the kind of wild, um, or the kind of shiny hunting system they had in Sun and Moon. I know some people had problems with it, you know, where the Pokemon, why Pokemon call upon each other. Um, I liked it in that one where at least you're staying inside the battle and just keep going through it. Um, that's why I personally liked it, but I can see some people's complaints about it and stuff like that. So if they want to keep that back, bring that back, I'd be personally fine if they want to find some new system that is, you know, most people, like almost most universally people will enjoy. Perfect. I, I just want to make sure shiny hunting is fun and entertaining in this game because I know a lot of people do love their shiny hunting. And also 43 is kind of a bold claim that they could do. I want to see every Pokemon ever in Pokemon history be catchable or obtainable at least in these games. That's kind of a that kind of a hot take and it might be crazy, but uh, that would be pretty cool. Uh, of course, this wouldn't be like ev like Route One wouldn't have uh, every single Bidoof, you know, Rattata, uh, centric kind of you know variant there is at once. I'm saying in post game you unlock ways to find these Pokemon. Just a really just be fun to actually be able to complete your living decks in one single game. That would be amazing. I don't think they're going to do this for a couple different reasons, but. You know, personally, I think they really should, and it'd be super fun. Legendaries is where it gets a little bit nif uh, iffy there, but, uh, you know, there was a pretty good system in Sun Ultra Sun and Moon. You go through Ultra Space and stuff, so maybe they could bring something like that back, too. Who knows? I don't know. And, of course, we also have the version exclusive Pokemon, how they're going to deal with that. I don't know. But uh, between the two of the games, to have every single Pokemon ever throughout all history, all 900 or 800, many there are, um, that would be awesome. That would be really, really cool. So... And also with these new um, every Pokemon ever being catchable, every every time a new game's come out, uh, people are always talking about new evolutions to old Pokemon. We haven't gotten since Gen 4, but you know, this is 4 Gen since Gen 4, so maybe they're doing it every 4th Gen. Gen 8, we're going to get new evolutions to old Pokemon, we can hope. I'd also be happy with baby Pokemon, sure, 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 so uh, whatever. I just want to see some old Pokemon that seem to have gotten some kind of like overlooked be expanded upon in this generation you know if we have gen 4 2.0 i personally wouldn't complain i really liked the kind of mixture of some new guys that were really well designed of course with the huge amount of pokemon that were um you know didn't have second evolutions or third evolutions given a new evolution line will be was awesome and there's a lot of pokemon that you can pick from from the past that could be given new evolutions because there's a lot out there that definitely deserve it so uh, definitely be a fun thing to do for sure. And along with new evolutions, new Mega Evolutions, why not, you know? Uh, I don't mean, I guess you could give them new Z-Moves or something like that, but new Mega is, is something specifically um, that I personally would like to see very badly. A lot of people like the Mega Evolution, you know, you can't just bring in a feature and ignore it. It's here to stay whether you like it or not, so may as well just incorporate uh, Mega Evolutions all the way and just add a few more for some of the newer Pokemon or whatever, um, and that'd be really fun. Some of the new starter Pokemon as well, that'd be really cool. So, um, this is real quick, this is post-editing, the sound quality is probably horrible right now because I'm not near my mic at all, but real quick, I want to throw in here 45 and a half because I just now realized that I don't have uh, new Alolan forms or Galarian forms that for, their, for that matter on this list, and that should definitely be one of them, so yeah, there you go, new, uh, new forms because the, the Alolan Pokemon uh, type changes and everything were really cool, so bringing that back into Galar for past Pokemon would be awesome, so yeah, there you go. All right, number 46 is going to be a really weird one out of the park, but I'd like there to be a method in-game to find out how to evolve a Pokemon. Now, pretty much every time you catch a Pokemon, pretty much the first thing most people do if they they don't know off the top of their head is they look up what level the Pokemon evolves or the evolution method, they need to find a certain item somewhere or whatever, but if there was a way in-game to actually figure this out, that would be super cool. And I'm not just saying the Pokedex should just tell you straight up, but if you, there's a way to like obtain like some kind of virtual tokens you spend on the Pokedex and that you can unlock the method, the evolution method for certain Pokemon, 
That would be really cool and a really interesting way. Of course, the trainers can always just look up on their phones, just like that. But there's a lot of times you're playing Pokemon, you don't want to pull out your phone, or let's say you don't have internet or whatever. It's all, it'd be a really cool way to kind of just figure it out through your Pokedex, um, or through some kind of method in-game to figure out the, how your Pokemon will evolve. And also, why not move sets as well? You know, figure out what their like like their their move pool is, so you know what level to evolve them at for the Pokemon, or just in general. If you're curious about what moves they're going to learn in the future, this could be really cool. And I think a token system for this would be pretty interesting. Um, also, 47. A lot of people have been talking about this recently. I want to see a return of a cool mythical event go on, rather to obtain some kind of cool legendary Pokemon, rather than just GameStop. So a lot of times in the past, you'd go to visit Dark Rise Island. You'd go to, um, you know, Shaman's kind of thing. You'd go see Deoxys, all this kind of crazy cool stuff. Now they just say, "Here's a cool Pokemon in GameStop," and you go talk to the guy. Uh, you put in the code and. Bada bing, bada boom, you got the Pokemon, no cool like island or anything like that. So bringing stuff like that back would be super interesting and super cool. Um, definitely want to see that. And also, DLC? Question mark? I mean, while we're here, of course I prefer DLC to be free. But, you know, with the power of the internet, we could add DLC like islands. So there's like a new island they add that have new Pokemon with them and new trainers. I don't know about blocking Pokemon behind a paywall or something like that. It seems a little bit iffy. But, you know, just a new island to go and battle, like, maybe, like, an old returning trainer, um, you know, like, maybe blue or red's there, entice you over, you're like, mm, I really want to hang out with red and battle red, so you'll, you'll get the DLC, whether it be paid or not. Um, prefer, obviously, free. Everyone wants a free DLC, but realistically, it'd probably be paid, and uh, even then, I'm down for that. That'd be pretty cool. So, um, also, uh, 49 is kind of a random one, just picked out randomly. I'd like to see them redo a few of the Pokemon models. So what it's looked like from the trailers, it looks like they're using the same Pokemon model engine as they were in Gen, um, you know, 7 and 6, you know, the same kind of renders for all the Pokemon. The models, for the most part, honestly look good, but a few of them really don't, in my opinion. A lot of times it's the flying type Pokemon, um, you know, because I think they were made like this for the flying battles, but now that we don't really have flying battles, probably not coming back. We don't really need them to look like this. And I think they should redo a lot of the models that look really weird, because I know people make fun of a lot of the models out there that they don't think specifically look very good, and I, I do too as well, so there's a few examples you can find online. And I think those, those specific examples may as well just remake them, you know, it can't be that hard if you're picking out, let's say, like 50 max uh, different models to remake, you can just remake the worst looking ones out there. So. Finishing off with number 50, going back and changing up and remaking on the trend of that, let's talk about official artwork for Pokemon. You know, official artwork hasn't really been updated for most guys in a long time, so let's go from like Gen Gen 3 and back and just update the artwork. Gen 4, but probably, yeah, probably Gen 4 I'd say and go back and just update the official artwork for the guys. I know there's no real need to do this, but it is really cool. I never in the past, whenever a new generation would come back, come out, like, Gen 2 remakes, I'd always look forward to them remaking, you know, the models for the artwork. I mean, yeah, the artwork for the Pokemon and going back and seeing what their new artworks look like and comparing them. So for them to go back from Gen 4 and down, like redraw all that art would be awesome. I don't think they're going to do that because, you know, why would they? But, you know, Ken Sugimori and the team are really talented in the new way they're designing Pokemon and art to make it look more coherent with all the Pokemon. May as well go back and redraw those guys. I mean, they can't make them look worse. The designs are set in stone, so would be fun. Would be interesting to see how they handle it. So that's gonna la wrap up the fiftieth one in the entire list. So I'm pretty exhausted. I lost my voice a couple times in the middle of this video, but uh, I think it's definitely worth it. De definitely think this video is interesting, and I'm really, really excited to see what happens with Pokemon Sword and Shield. Uh, overall, so let me know what the features I left out here that you definitely want to see in the comments down below and uh, Just in general for my channel expect more videos, you know, I'm uh, Finished with my uh, my tough exams and everything like that I can focus more on YouTube and then let me know if you got any ideas you want me to record videos about so Definitely be the keep out make sure to subscribe if you're not for more videos Thank you guys for watching so much make sure to like and subscribe It means a lot this video is really hard to make so really do appreciate the support and uh, see you guys next time and bye-bye